room, but that's a rank outsider, what the experts call a three-legged dog. Oh, well, just the same, that's the one I fancy. Why, for heaven's sake? I don't know, just fancy it. Call it instinct, if you like. Oh, a woman's instinct's all very well in its place, but on the greyhound crack, it could be disastrous. Oh, well, I always go by my instinct. I haven't done so bad, you know. Oh, I grant you that, but you look goon, really. Have you been to the greyhounds before? Oh, Bert took me once or twice. Did you follow your instinct then? Of course. Did you win? <laughs> Yeah, I did, if you must know. Poor Albert didn't know. He was like you. Always studying form. And I had to treat him to a fish and chip supper afterwards. <laughs> All right, Mrs. T, put your woman's instinct to work again. You fancy Blue Lagoon in the last race tonight. What about uh, the third, race number three? What do you fancy? Uh, let's have a look. Ah, um, that's interesting. I'll tell you something. Nell Gwynn the second now. The train has got uh, three dogs running. It's been second uh, four times out, so it's been downgraded. It's fastest times 29.36. Well, legs ahead of anything else. It's got its legs in hand. Where does it say all that? I read the race like this. Uh, number one's a slow starter. Yes, he's out fast. Two and three come out fast with a four on their heels. There's a bunch up at the first bend. Six runs wide. Five's got an unimpaired run. He's hoping dry. Oh, it doesn't stand a chance, Mr. Hunter. I thought so. What do you fancy? Oh, Bill. Oh, no, not the number one dog. Grant you a woman's instinct on anything like that. He's only in there to make up the number. Oh, well, that settles it. Look, I want uh, ten pounds to win on old Bill. Here. This is tea. You can have put it on or shall I do it myself? Yes, but not ten pounds, is it? I want ten pounds on him. I've never betted more than two bob in my life before, and I want to know what it feels like to have a great big win. Or a great big loss. Oh, go on, it's only money. You're on the slippery slope, Mrs. T. You'll be joining Gamblers Anonymous tomorrow. Ark at the pot, calling the kettle black. Who brought me here? I did, but I didn't dream If that you, you miss this race, Mr. Hunter, I'll chase you round. Oh, all right, Mrs. T. So be it, old Bill. You're sure? Definite. Ten pounds. Ten pounds on his tail, or whatever they call it. Somewhere in the region of 120 pounds. Oh, I say as much as all that. What sort of fish do you like, Mr. Hunter? Skate, cod, nice bit of rock salmon. <laughs> I'm going to do is let Charlie Cheesecake get away with it. He's had us up a gum tree for six weeks now, Agalyn. Yeah. Well, your boss beats him, Olive. Oh, hey, Olive. Too much, Edie. Now, he's what I call Tarla. What I call a proper old-fashioned reactionary. Robin's a good name for him. So he spends his life robbing other people. Well, where's the vinegar? Pass the vinegar, would you? Here, what's a reactionary? Oh, someone who's trying to put the clock back. Oh, stop it altogether. Oh, I'm sick of talking to him. Well, his meetings go on and on. Twice I haven't been home this week. Now, we'll have to bring all the shop workers out on strike, May. I mean, that's the only thing the other side will understand. Oh, don't rush at it, girl. We're gradually chipping them away bit by bit. They've already agreed to ten bob a week more. We'll push them up. I vote we go on strike. And propose everyone a robin shop and barber's grocery. Have a little patience, Bob. And one thing I've learned in 20 years as an outdoor delegate and branch secretary is you don't start a fight unless you're pretty sure you can win it. True. Well, blow me. 
Look who the wind's blown in. Uh, one rock, one skate, and six pin of the chips to us, please. <coughs> we'll eat it here. And uh, uh, two pickled onions, please. Who is she? Alice Thursday. No. Used to come into Robin's when I was behind the counter. <laughs> Talk of the devil. I, I'll lay odds she won't recognise me. No, I should pretend she don't. Now, my carpenter. Oh, Thursday. The corner shop you used to serve me regular. Well, isn't that nice? Can we come and sit along with you? Oh, you having a meeting or something? Mrs. T. Oh, this is Mr. Hunter. How do you know? Oh, well, it would be a bit of a squash here. We'll sit at the next table. Me and Mr. Hunter's just been to the dumps. Oh, it's getting posh here, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder what you were doing round this way. Did you win? I won a few bob. How about your friend? No, Mr. Hunter was unlucky. His dogs kept uh, falling down or getting dumped. Oh. There. I knew I was going to win, you know. I felt it in me bones. I felt I couldn't lose. And yeah, you didn't. No. Oh, um, here, yeah. could we borrow your vinegar? There. Here we are, Mr. Hunter. Tuck in. Okay. Mm, no, not like that. You want plenty of it. They do a lovely bit of skate here. And you need some bones. The best bit. Um, oh, there we are, thanks. Yeah. Could you introduce me to your friends? Oh, uh, yeah, well, Mrs. Thursday, Edith Compton. Thank you, dear. Hello. 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 And Grace Walter. Thank you, do. And, and... No. He's not with us. No. Why are you turning up like this? We just come from a meeting with two of your friends. You have? Who's that? Mr. Robin, who owns Robin Stores. Oh, yeah. He's no friend of mine, though, dear. I used to do a bit of shopping at his place, as you know, but I never met him. And Mr. Gunnersby, who owns Bluegrass Dairy. No, don't know him neither. Mm. How's the fish? Mmm, good, all right. So you don't know Robin or Gunnersby, then? No, dear. Don't know as I particularly want to, neither. So you don't know that for the past six weeks we've been trying to get them to raise the wages in their shops? and do something about the rotten conditions of the girls who work there. No. Mind you, I wish you luck. I'm all for it. She never gives up proper suffrage yet. Always holding me. Oh, yeah, that's Stop. Nice. Thank you. Much. Wish us luck, do you? All for it, are you? Hey, When are you going to start doing something about those <coughs> lousy shops of yours? Don't know what you're talking about. J.F. Harkins, 35 pounds of shops that are talk of the trade. Don't say you've never heard of them. J.F. what? Parkins, Mrs. Thursday. P-A-R-K-I-N-S. Parkins. Your shops. My shops? Your shops. I haven't got no shops. Have I? Afraid you have, Mrs. T. Mr. Dunrich took them over just before he died. 35 shops trading under the name of J.F. Parkins. Well, nobody never told me. You don't know what you have got, do you? No, that's true. Until this very minute, I never even heard the name of J.F. Parkins. Well, you've heard about them now, haven't you? Well, what's all the fuss? What about these oh, shops? Mrs. T., I don't think this is the time or... No, place. I want to know. What you knocking at? Oh, I'm not knocking. I'm telling you. J.F. Parkins happens to be one of the worst employers in the trade. Well, don't go on at me. I don't run them. Well, you own them. Get your nose out of it. You want to have a look round and Mrs. Thursday they might give you a shock. They're just great. If you have a legitimate grievance, why don't you make an appointment to see our Labour Relations Manager? <laughs> oh, oh, a lot of good that do. Would it be a sight better than shouting your head off in a cat without Shepherd's Bush gulping at you? If it's like what you say, I'll see it's looked into. Oh, well, you do that, Mrs. Thursday. I'll be very interested to see what happens. Come on, let's go. Excuse me, Barry. No, I've not finished my chips yet. Well, leave them. Oh. I'll see you again. I hope. <laughs> Here's your bag, love. Come. Oh, well. Can you beat him? Well, don't worry, I'll look into it. Eat your rock salmon, it'll get cold. No, I don't fancy it no more. She's cut me off. The way she talked to me as if I was a criminal or something. Why didn't you tell me we own these shops? It'll take a lifetime to tell you the things we own, Mrs. T. Oh, well, she's put me off my supper. And that takes a bit of doing. J.F. Parkinson's eat. 
Good night. Oh, I'm choked with dust. These can't have been looked at for donkey's years. Well, they shouldn't be in that state. We employ enough cleaners. Oh, well, it's not their fault. You can't dust that records room without taking all the books off. Take too long. So, of course, they just dust the tops. Look, I'll show you. You see, if you draw the dust at all, you, then all the dust settles in the ridge of the binding. So what they do, they dust backwards and it all falls behind, you see, like that. Then when they take it out, they've only got one ledge to dust, see? It's a rotten job, dusting <coughs> books. I hate it. Yes. <coughs> well, <coughs> did you get what you wanted? Ah, oh, Mr. Dunrich. I wish you was here. No, I can't make head and a tail of all these figures. What have you got? Well, I've checked up on the wages. We pay the basic agreed minimum scale. Basic agreed? Is that all right? Not very much. Most other stores pay well above the minimum. Well, then, what's stopping us? Couldn't say. Well, then, Miss May Carpenter was right. We don't treat the girls proper. No, not so fast, Mrs. T. There's nothing there about incentive bonuses or conditions of work. But, uh, well, I, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's right to me here uh, going to the dogs and putting ten quid on a dog and coming away from the White City with 125 pounds. Beginner's luck. Well, take these girls months to earn that kind of money. It's hard at the point. Well, what is the point? I own 35 shops I never even heard about. I've got hundreds of girls working for me I've never met. Don't know what they're paid or how they're treated. Now, that ain't right. All right, Mrs. T. It seems to me there's only one thing for it. Go and see for yourself. That's just what I mean to do. Here. It's uh, all marked on the map. The uh, gold stars are the branches of Parkins. Oh, look! We got one in Birmingham, right in the centre. <sighs> Better put it on the floor, I think. Right, Mrs. T. Close your eyes, stick in a pin, and hey presto. Oh, I hope the girls won't think I'm snooping and spying on them. Well, you don't want them to roll out the red carpet for you just because you're the chairman, do you? No. No, right. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll uh, put on something a little more casual and we'll look just like customers, OK? Right. It's all right. You're on. Right. Fall Caesar. Hey? Stab, Mrs. T. Close your eyes and plunge to the heart. Oh, I see. Liberty, freedom, tyranny is dead. Run hence, proclaim, cry it about the streets. Cardiff. Cardiff! shopping and have a look round, then we'll ask to see the manageress and tell her quietly who we are. <laughs> Just see the look on her face. Oh dear, I've got the collie wobbles. Butterflies, Mrs. T. Every great actress has them. <laughs> Come on. Blimey. I think we're going to owe May Carpenter an apology. Excuse me, miss. Excuse me. Are you the manageress? Mm. Oh, dear, now I'll have to start again. There's the manageress, Miss Christ. Yes, are you telling me? I won't be. Mm. Yes, madam, can I help you? Are you Miss Grace, the manageress? Uh, yes, madam, I am. Uh, you uh, express surprise. I assure you, I share your concern. I shall be in the office attending to the accounts. But I have to spend all my time out here because of the shortage of staff. Oh, you've got shortage of staff, have you? Oh, yes, it's terrible. You just can't get the girls. Um, oh, well, I'd better see you now, then. Oh, you've come about a job, have you? Uh, oh, well, that's a relief. Uh, well, uh, if you wouldn't mind waiting here, I'll see you in the office. I'll just attend to the gentleman first. Yes, sir. Can I get you anything? Oh, yes, sir. A packet of aspirins, please. Oh, do you have a headache, sir? Uh, no, madam. There's <laughs> someone who's just about to have one. Take a 
helping you. Why not? Then we can really see everything from the inside. <laughs> look at that. That's dangerous stuff. Yes, and look at the space behind the counters. You have to fight someone to get past them. Did you see that? She picked up the bacon in her bare hands. And look at the overalls. Nothing on their heads. You'll have your work cut out, Mrs. T. What are you going to do? Well, I'm working here. Oh, I think I'll just throw around the town, pick up a little croak, local character, sample the brew, absorb the atmosphere. Oh, very nice. I'm slung in at the deep end while well, you go off galley fencing. Would you come and have here now, please? Can I get you something else, sir? Oh, excuse me. Um, that gentleman was just telling me that he's applying for a job here, too. Oh, really? Oh, we could do with a good strong man on the bacon slice, sir. Uh, if you would mind, wouldn't mind waiting there, I'll see you after this late. I think you've got it. You mean I've had it? I think he's shy, didn't know what to say. Poor man, he's going to be outnumbered by a lot of mere females here, I'm afraid. But he looks as if he could take care of himself. Oh, I'm sure he can. Uh, please sit down. Ah, oh, have you had any experience in the retail trade before, Miss... Mrs... Uh, 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 Foster. Mrs. Foster. Mrs. Foster, have you worked in a shop before? No, I'm afraid I haven't. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's very rare we get anyone who has. Now, what was your last job? I was a cleaner. A cleaner? Oh. Well, that's all right, isn't what? it? Oh, yes. I mean, being a cleaner. Y yes. Uh, yes, of course. Now, where did you work? Oh, in London. And who did you work for? Oh, well, all over the place. Office or domestic? Both. You look as if you could do with a few cleaners round here. Yes, well, it's so difficult to get them. So you were a cleaner, were you? Yeah, well, nothing wrong with that, is there? No, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, the chairman of our company used to work in an office as a cleaner once. Uh, Mrs. Thursday. I expect you've heard of her. Uh, I, I did read something about it. Uh, what about wages? 159 shillings, the basic rate. I'll have to just work that out. Seven pounds, 19. Uh, oh, yes, that's right. Nine till six, after he closed in Wednesday and an hour for lunch. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, when would you like to start? Oh, well, what about now? Well, I hadn't expected... I see no reason why not. Have you got your cards? Not with me, no. Well, we'll bring them with you tomorrow, then. I'll start you with Mrs. Evans. She'll show you the ropes. This way, please. Mrs. Evans, will you take Mrs. Foster to the restroom and give her a coat? She's starting work here. Yes, Miss Grist. Hey, what do I do about these customers? I'll take it. Well, now, don't be long. Will you come this way, please? I won't be long. I'll be with you in just a few. I'm sorry to take you away from uh, your sums, dear. That's all right, love. Uh, are you happy here? Happy? Oh, it's marvellous. Standing on your feet eight hours a day, pushing past one another, stretching up to the top shelves all the time, and top me nose, Miss Frist, rushing around all day like a birch from in a fit. Marvellous. Here, welcome to the staff retiring and recreation room, otherwise known as the dump. Yes, I see what you mean. Here's a clean overall for you. Oh, is this where you have your dinners? Not if you're in your right, right mind. On a sunny day, you can take your sandwiches to the park. And suppose it rains? I usually sneak mine into the library, have a read. You're not supposed to eat in there. No. I say, look at the sofa, I ask you. Thank have you. a fag? No, thank you. I'll have a sweet. Have one? No, thank you. Are you allowed to make yourself a cup of tea? Oh, of course. No expense spared here. On that. Where does her ladyship eat? Oh, she just goes out. That is one thing we never see her at the lunch hour. You allow tea breaks, are you? When we're not busy, we take a turn. It's a marvel people still shop here, but they do. I suppose it's because of our position. There's not another shop like this within a quarter of a mile. No, I should hope not. <laughs> we could travel the trade, really, but the staff don't care and you can't blame them. Nobody cares about us, do they? Do you know who owns this place? Mrs. Thursday. We thought she might do something to brighten things up, but we've never seen hide nor hair of her. 
She's just like all the rest. All she cares about is the profits. Well, perhaps Mrs. Thursday doesn't know. Perhaps nobody's told her. I don't want to talk about her. It makes me flaming mad to think of her in her blooming London mansion. If I had my way, I'd bring her down here and I'd stuff her head in a barrel of lies. I'd say to give Mrs. Foster a coat not conduct a service, Mrs. Evans. Yes, oh, sir, She was it. just helping me, Mrs. Out in the shop is where the help is needed, not in the restroom. I have applicants for jobs waiting to be interviewed out there and you're in here gossiping. Now, come along, for goodness sake. Yes, yes Miss Grace. Here, Mrs. Foster, do you do the horses? Oh, well, I like a couple of Bob on the National because I've got a marvellous tip for the three. Coming, Miss Grace. Now, Mrs. Uh, Evans will show you the ropes, Mrs. Foster. Would you come in now, please? Of course, madam. Mm -hmm. <coughs> please take a seat. Oh, thank you, madam. How gracious of you. Ah, you've come for a job. I have, yes. I was just saying to Mrs. Foster, who was in here before you. Mrs. Foster? Oh, yes, of course, Mrs. Foster. I was just saying how badly we are in need of a good, strong man on the bacon slicer. On the bacon slicer? The bacon slicer. You uh, haven't worked one before, by any chance? No, I don't think I've ever had that pleasure. Uh, uh, what is your name? Fortescue. Fortescue. Ah. I take it you've had no experience in the retail trade, Mr. Fortescue. No, I'm sorry. Oh, but you look as if you've got a quick brain. You'll soon pick it up. Oh, I'm sure. And a firm hand. I beg your pardon? For the bacon slicer. Oh, yes. If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Fortescue, there's just a tidy little bit of a mystery about you. Oh, Miss Christ, what's so mysterious about me? I don't know. But there's nothing so unerring as a woman's instinct, you know. So I've been told. Well, why do you want a job here? Do you really want a job? Oh, why do you ask, madam? Well, I can usually size up a person pretty quickly, and you don't look to me at all the sort of person who'd be applying for a job in a shop like this. Oh? What sort of person do I seem to you to be? I don't know. I hope you don't mind my talking like this. Oh, not at all. Please go on. Well? Uh, you speak very nicely. You have a certain... Mm hmm? Uh, je ne fais quoi? I might almost say breeding. Oh, well, don't almost say it, Miss Chris. Say it. Uh, all right. You have a certain breeding. <laughs> well, as I have. So, I can only think of one reason why you'd be applying for a job in a shop like this. Oh, I'm intrigued to know everything you should think, Miss Chris. Well... I think you've been in trouble. I beg your pardon. Don't think I hold it against you. A man makes a mistake and pays the price for, to society. It's wrong that the punishment should be continued afterwards. Punishment? I want you to realize that I understand. A person from your background used to a certain standard in things. And then, perhaps, through no fault of his own, falling on hard times. Tempted? Oh, my dear Miss Christ, I assure you there's nothing of the sort. It's best that we should be honest about what's happened. Well, that's what I've always been. Honest. Then why are you reduced to this? Well, I, uh, I... Uh... Mr. Fortescue, you can tell me everything. All right, I will. If you must know, I... My name isn't Fortescue, it's Carruthers. You see? I knew. And I'm a commissioned officer in Her Majesty's forces. Mr. Fortescue. Uh, Carruthers. Mr. Carruthers, please. I want to help you. Well, then, let me explain. I, uh, I'm uh, Major Barclay Carruthers of the 8th Royal Lancers, and it's officers versus other ranks in an initiative test. Initiative test? Oh, nothing very serious. It was the CEO's idea. I'm supposed to work for a week here as a shopper's assistant and to prove it by taking back a wage packet unopened and a hundred trading stamps. <laughs> ask you, madam. Uh, but orders are orders. Uh, will you give me a job? You're doing it as a joke. Oh, no, not a joke, Mistress. Perish the thought. It's very serious. Even by disclosing my purpose to you, I've already broken QRs. QRs? Queen's regulations. Mm -hmm. I can, of course, rely on you to maintain the utmost secrecy. Oh, certainly, of course. Oh, thank you so much. It's hard to tell you that any breach of confidence uh, could be, well, serious for all concerned. Oh, my goodness. You can depend upon their complete silence. Thank you. And congratulations. Congratulations. Well, you spotted me, didn't you? You saw through me at once. Well, 
Yes, I suppose I did. You're a flawless judge of character. Well, I flatter myself I can read character, you know. Though I am a little bit disappointed I haven't got a man. Oh, yes, well, of course, that's understandable. I'm sorry. I must say surprised. However, in time, someone will come uh, along. For the shop, I mean. We do need a man here. Oh, yes, of course, the bacon slicer. You know, I've always wanted to operate one of those things. It's quite an exciting challenge. Wait till I tell them about this in the mess. <laughs> Major Carruthers, would you care for a glass of sherry? Sherry, madam? I keep a little sherry in the safe. Because we sometimes do have a visit from our chairman, and I'd like to be prepared. Your chairman? Yes, he often pays us a visit to see how things are running here. And we have a little nip in the office before she does her tour of inspection. Hmm. Would you care to join me before we let battle commence out there? A little glass of the chairman's sherry. I don't mind if I do. Allow me. Thank you, Major. Shh. Not Major. Not here. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Fortescue. Now, Miss Grist. To you. And to our closer association. Just a minute, Mr. Cold cream. But Mrs. Evans, do we sell cold cream down there on your right? Oh, I've got it. Oh, blimey! I can't get out. Mrs. Evans! Oh! There you oh. are, love. Cold cream is one and eight pence eight, please. One and eight pence eight, me. Uh, oh, and two pounds of sugar. Oh. Uh, where's the sugar, Mrs. Evans? Along there. What, the other end of the shop? Oh, sorry. One pound or two pounds, madam? What, love? Two pounds. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. How much is two pounds of sugar, Mrs. Evans? I'm trying not to keep interrupting me while I'm counting, Mrs. Foster. I've lost count again now. Can you serve me, please? In a minute. I haven't got four pairs of hands. That's not the way to speak. Who do you think you're talking to? Look, <laughs> being nice to them doesn't cost us anything, does it? I like your nerve. You've been here two hours and you're telling me how to do my job. No, I only mean to say that good manners don't cost us nothing. You look after your customers, I'll look after mine. Two pounds of sugar is one and six for safety. Oh, well, sorry. Look, I'm in a hurry, please. Look, madam, you're in a hurry. Down the street. I can't do it. Now, this is the claw. The claw. The claw. It holds the bacon nice and firm. Now, pull it down. There, now you have it in a vice. Now, this is the gauge. It helps to get the right thickness. Set it at number six. That's right. Now, this is the wheel. Try it. No, 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 not so fast. Take it slowly now. Put your hand on mine. There. You see? Eat. And look at the nice clean rashes we're getting. Beautiful. Poetry in motion. There, now make it into a neat pile, stick three and nine a pound on it and shove it in the counter. I think you're going to do very well, you know. One and seven, two and six, one and one and three, wasn't it? One and three, and, and three and nine, the ten. That's two and six and one and six and one and eleven. Wait a minute, one and eleven and, and one and eleven and four and seven. Oh no, four and seven. Look, Mr. Hunter, don't come clattering up my side of the counter. Good afternoon, her. madam. Good afternoon. You won't forget. I notice you're getting on very well with his grist. Well, I strive to do my best, you know. Yes, well, you watch yourself on that bacon snarl, so you could do yourself a very nasty injury. <laughs> do you mind? I've been waiting here ten minutes already. Well, I'm doing my best, madam. I haven't got... I only got... wanted my chain. Oh, oh, sorry. Thank you. Good afternoon, madam. You know, May Carpenter was right. This place is a shambles. Oh, it's a blooming disgrace. I mean, because the trade's here. Uh, where's the what's it, Mr. Hunter? What? Oh, what's yes, of course, the what's it. It's uh, out there through the back door. Well, I won't be out for marriage. Wait till you've seen it. 
I'm ever so sorry talking to you like that, but no offence, mate. That's all right, Mrs. Foster. We all get a bit short-tempered just sorry. before closing time. Oh, Betty, now I'll take a pound of strawberry jam and half a pound. Pam's on the other counter, Mrs. Morgan. Oh, We've yes. got a new gentleman to serve you. Oh, oh is that the racing edition, Mrs. Morgan? Uh, yes, Betty. Could I look at it for a moment? Of course, yes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Oh, done up again, then. Thank you. That's right. Here. Here, isn't that Mrs. Foster? Oh, dear. It says Mrs. Thursday. Mrs. Thursday? But is it Mrs. Thursday? Well, it says so there, doesn't it? Your change. She's mm -hmm. the governor. Oh, is she? She's our governor. What's she doing here? Well, What's she doing working here? I, uh... There she is. Where's Miss Grist? Where is she? Oh, excuse me. Oh, look, I'm uh, look, absolutely I don't, I don't, terrible. Excuse me, can I have a Excuse hold? me, please, will you? Me. No, please excuse me. Does everybody have to use that place out there, madam? Mrs. Foster, what do you mean by well, walking into my office like this? It's absolutely terrible. I've never seen anything like it. The old place. No wonder you can't get people to work here. Well, why don't you tell Mrs. Thursday all about it? Eh? Mrs. Thursday? I think you'd better get out the sherry. Miss Grist. Going on, Miss Grizz. Never you mind. I'll lock the door and wait in the restroom. Mr. Thursday, I assure you, either I have always done my best to work with Jones. And you pretended to be an army officer. All right, well, please, Miss Grizz. Now calm down. Since yesterday we've all had time to think things over, and Mrs. Thursday wants to discuss things with you. I'm sorry. Well, what I want to know, Miss Grizz, is why didn't you let us know all this at Dunridge House instead of keeping it to yourself? But I haven't kept it to myself, Mrs. Thursday. I have repeatedly informed Head Office A about the shortage of space, B about the limited budget we're allowed for redecorating and replacing our equipment. I've told them all this. And what does they say? Oh, I've had so many blank replies to my letters that I gave up bothering. I mean, for instance, those girls should have clean overalls at least once a week. Oh, I should think so. Well, yes, I know this, Mrs. Thursday, but I have to get sanction from head office for every increased expenditure like this, I'm afraid. No, Miss Gross, please. I must confess, I gave up worrying a long time ago. I did worry. When I first came here, I tried to run the shop decently and efficiently. But nobody wants to work in a shop today. You just can't get the staff. And when you get the feeling the dead office just isn't caring. Well, Mr. Lee was on his way down. There'll uh, have to be a lot of changes. You must understand that. I suppose that means me. Mrs. Thursday, if I said anything in our interview to... to no, attend, that doesn't bother me, dear. But I would like a word with the girls before the shop opens. And I'd like it closed for one hour after lunch because I've got somebody else coming down here and there'll be meetings going on. Certainly, Mrs. Thursday. I'll do my best to help you, I promise you. Well, I think we shall have to consider a new manager in here. She's not up to it. Oh, I don't agree. I think Miss Chris would be a very good manager given half the chance. Credit where credit's due. She did try when she first came here, you know. Oh, I think she'll be all right. How do you know? Call it instinct. What? Can't allow you to have a monopoly of that, can we? Come on. Well, that's that. As far as I can see, that's all there is. Thirsty. There's trouble. Now, yeah, what's happened? The girls are giving their notice in. They're leaving at the end of the week. Why? They didn't say. Ah, I'll talk to them. Mrs. Evans, is this right that you've just given your notice in? You've worked here, Mrs. Thursday. You should know. If you want to know the truth, you coming down here the way you did was the last straw. 
We didn't know who you were. We took you into our confidence, told you all sorts Mrs. Thurston, now let the girl speak, Miss Grist. You were spying on us. We got enough on our plates without having to watch our tongues in case a secret agent from Dunridge House is hovering around. So you all got together this morning and decided to pack it in? Yes. We've complained to Miss Grist. We're tired of complaining. Did you tell Mr. Lever? I've just told you, Mrs. Thursday. The girls' complaints fell on deaf ears, so I gave up. But where's the sense in packing it all in now, just as we've all come down here to do something about it? I mean, look at the change in this room already. We was working here till 10 o'clock last night. Well, don't we know it? Anyway, Mrs. Thursday needs your help. Now, Betty, yes, I do. Yesterday, you was telling me all that was wrong here. You know all about it. So does Hilda and so does Gwen. You're three bright girls. But you've decided to sling your ox. Well, now, just you hold your horses. I've got somebody coming down here who knows all about shops. She's worked in them for 20 years, so she should. And if you still want to leave after you've heard what she's got to say, well, then, you can have your cards back. <laughs> shop workers had the living in system. They were nothing but slaves of the employers who told them when they could come in and go out, when they could marry, how they could conduct their private lives, all for five bob a week, a 14 hour day and a moment's notice and you're out. They beat that by working together and forming a union. Now things have changed today because of what they did but that don't mean there's no more fighting to be done. Now the first thing is to get you three signed up to the union. I've got the forms here. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Once the union starts sticking their nose in this trouble, I don't want to possess you to bring them down here. Well, I don't mind them having a look round, Mr. Lever. Of course, if there's anything you don't want them to see... It's not that. Well, Parkins is a nice little business. It's doing very well. You could do better at downside better. And in what way? Or by modernising. Extending the premises to begin with. I've inquired about the shop next door. We can get it. Then we do up the whole place. Heating, lighting, plumbing, frontage, everything. Yes, and self-service. I mean, we can't go on like this, shoveling about the shop to find a tin of sardines. We can make this one of the most progressive stores in the country. A pram park for a start. A what? Somewhere for your missus to put the kids. Yes, and a nice restroom for the old people where they can sit down and take the weight off their feet. An amusement arcade, swings, roundabouts, and a bowling alley. It's no good being sarky, Mr. Lever. Now look. I don't mind modernising, but let's have a bit of moderation. You've been looking to do what you want under half a million. Well, it's either that or we get rid of the lot. I'm not having us run shops like this. If we can't do better, then we've no right in the business at all. Look, the returns are very good and that's what counts. Oh, well, it don't with me. Well, you better tell that to the shareholders of the next annual general meeting. You bet I will. Uh, Mrs. Thursday, could we have a word with you, please? Oh, all right, dear. You better come too. Thursday. About the wages. It seems to us that the basic rate is too low. Now look here, Mrs. Carpenter. Are you an official representative of the union? Oh, of course she is. Don't ask silly questions. You were saying that's what worries the girls most. Well, what do you suggest? Fifty pounds a week. Would that satisfy everybody concerned? Take no notice. Well, we did think of an extra two pounds a week, all round. That's national union policy. Well, that seems fair enough to me. What do you think, Mr. Hunter? Very reasonable, Mrs. Thursday. Can I have a private word with you? Oh, certainly, Mr. Hunter. Excuse us. Oh, this is ridiculous. It's a mockery of all the accepted negotiated procedure. Two pounds a week extra, just like that. Well, that brings the wage up to ten pounds. Do you reckon that's too much for a week's work? But it has to be related to profit margin, you just don't understand. I understand more than you think. Pay these girls a decent wage, they'll take more interest in their work. That's common sense. Good business too. But the prices and incomes board will never let you get away with it. Oh, don't bother about them. If they turn nasty, I'll handle them. All right, May. You get it all down on paper and I'll sign it. Two pounds a week for everybody. Oh, you're a blinking marvel. As a matter of fact, I've uh, got the agreement already. See? She knows her stuff. Here, uh, now, sign it, will you? Somebody lend me a pen. Huh. There. Thanks. 
<laughs> May's right. You are a blinking marvel. Ah. I have the keys to set for you, Miss Christie. The chairman would like a glass of sherry for you. Fancy old Bill. No, I'm not talking about the dogs. I mean knocking some sense into her. <laughs> Don't you worry about her. It's her instinct, you see. Gives her a special aptitude for picking winners. In any case, in her present mood, a battle fleet couldn't shift her. Yes, I'm what are you two whispering about? Oh, nothing. Uh, just giving Joe a few tips. I believe you. Has is what it? I bet the time of my life today. I don't feel so dusty myself. Mia, how did you get off work to come down here? Work? What work? Our Robbie's giving me the boot. The boot? Sacked you after all these years? Yeah. Last old Robbie's got rid of his number one troublemaker. His what? His number one troublemaker. Oh. Of course, he wrapped it up, but that's the real reason. You come and work for me. You come and be manager in one of my shops. Nah, it's very nice of you, Alice, but I've got to get reinstated there, and I. It's a principle, isn't it? I could have left him a long time ago, but that's not what I'm in the game for, is it? Nah. If he can sack me for those reasons, none of the other girls are safe, are they? Now, that's right. He oughtn't to be allowed to get away with it. Something ought to be done about it. She's got that look in her eyes again, Joe. Someone's in for a caning. No, oh, no. Can't you stop her? Can't anyone stop her? What for? I'm enjoying it. Give her ten years and she'll change the world. Oh, what? Change the world. Oh! Thank you. 